Hello, YouTube friends. Today I'm reacting to Dr. Mike's Why Our Nutrition Guidelines Are Trash. I'm pretty excited about this one. And I guess it's actually an old video, but I haven't seen it yet. So we're doing this. The United States first implemented dietary guidance in 1894, and it changed constantly because of things like the Depression, World War rationing, and the discovery of vitamins and minerals. Things didn't get firmly established. Yeah, I've talked about this in some of my previous videos, but yeah, nutrition in and of itself is a really young science. So I I think I put this in perspective in one of my previous videos, but like if we were talking about physics, we would still be thinking that the earth, like the sun revolves around the earth. That's how little we'd actually know where nutrition, things are being discovered constantly. And it's fairly complex because even if we discover something about our food, we're later catching up with how that interacts with our bodies, how that's uniquely different based on people's DNA. And it gets extremely complicated. And it's a young science. So things will come out. People will think, oh my goodness, that's the thing I need to be doing. When really we don't know enough about X, Y, or Z yet to actually know what we need to be recommending, which is why we started off on shaky ground as it is. And I feel like the government has kind of held on to those original guidelines as much as they possibly can without uh, backtracking, without necessarily having all the data to back what they initially said we should be doing. Established till 1956 when the USDA announced the dietary guidance known as the four basic food groups. This became the main education tool for American school children for the next 36 years. So what were they pushing people to eat? If there are four basic food groups, as they said in 1956, what do you think those four basic food groups are? Proteins. Poultry. Vegetables. No. Dessert. I don't think they even knew about proteins when they created that. But yeah, I, oh my goodness. I know I've read about this and I'm not going to remember what the four groups were. But I think it was like fats, vegetables, probably grains, and dairy, maybe? I don't know. Let's see. Fruits and vegetables, man. <laughs> the four basic food groups were as follows. Milk, meats, fruits, and vegetables, and grains. These foods were introduced as part of a balanced meal, and the recommendation was that you eat all of these foods every single day. However, these recommendations had major flaws. For example, there was no distinction made between refined grains like white bread and whole grains like whole wheat bread. And it's an important one to make because whole wheat bread takes more energy for your body to break it down. Therefore, it doesn't spike your blood sugar. It doesn't spike your insulin. These are really important factors that affect the metabolic state within your body. The and it provides really good prebiotics for your gut biome. Like there's so much more that you're getting from whole grains that you take out when you refine them because most of the vitamins and minerals are actually naturally in that part of your grain. So when you do refine them, you're left with the starchiness of your seed. And that's fine to be consuming, but without that natural packaging, even if you do change it and make something like bread, you're still consuming more vitamins and minerals naturally, which in that form, your body is primed to actually accept those better. Uh, because when we refine them, we also generally put those vitamins and minerals back into it. Um, that's why it's called like enriched flour, it's reintroduced with those vitamins and minerals. However, it's like essentially taking a supplement. Your body isn't actually primed to receive that in the supplemental form. It's primed to receive it as a whole food. So that's why the more often you can eat whole foods, the better as a general simple rule. Worst part of this guidance is that it provided no guidance for the proportions of how much you should be eating. In fact, in a single day, you could have a well-balanced meal with a gallon of milk, a ribeye steak, peanut butter and jelly sandwich on white bread, and a single piece of broccoli. I don't think that's so healthy and kind of weird. Well, things then got better. 
sort of. Over the years, the USDA had realized there should be a bit more nuance in how people eat. So they introduced the idea of proportionality, a great move. Unfortunately, the USDA often relied on industry experts to help craft and approve official dietary guidance. This influence from groups like the dairy, corn, and meat. Yeah, which I was just gonna say, I think it's part of why we still have such an emphasis on dairy as a food group. When I've ranted about this in other videos too, dairy, <sighs> You don't actually need it. There are definitely benefits to consuming dairy if you can, but there are also some major drawbacks for a lot of the population. So I don't think it should be as heavily emphasized as it is. Meat industry led to dramatic messaging surrounding the importance of things like low fat or fat free foods with zero recognition of the benefits of things like healthy fats and clean oils. But while they suggested eating different proportions of foods, they didn't necessarily recommend the right proportions. Bread, pasta, cereal, oatmeal, carbs on carbs on carbs. The bottom of this food pyramid is literally all grains. And its recommendations were six to 11 servings a day. There's only 10 servings of oatmeal in here and look how much it is. I mean, look, I'm not here to demonize a single food ingredient because whole grains could totally be part of a healthy diet. The problem here is if you look at their recommendations and proportions, you could literally be eating twice as much white bread as you do vegetables a day and it was permissible and recommended by this food pyramid. That's poor guidance. Also, America was going through its fat-free, low-fat kick, which meant that we were demonizing fats. Not all fats are bad, A. Yes, and during the time food companies put sugar into foods as a way of making it more palatable while being fat free or low fat. So while they're promoting that we eat all of these grains and carbohydrates without clarifying whether they should be simple or complex, we're adding more simple carbohydrates in the form of added sugars to our other food groups and processed foods to make them more palatable while being fat free or low fat. So all in all, it's just way too much carbohydrate and not an emphasis on fats or proteins and balancing that out in a much better way. And B, we also poorly understand fats. Like, do you know the difference between whole milk and 1%? This is 2% milk. What does the 2% number represent? 2% of, of how much dairy is in it? 2% lactate. 2% reduced. Fat. Fat. The percent of fat in there. Exactly. So it's the percent of fat by weight. This is whole milk. What percent is in whole milk? Just all the fat. All of it. 100%. It's like 3.2. It varies depending on how much fat the cow produces specifically. Um, so certain breeds of cows will actually have more fat in their milk than others. But in general, it's sitting around 3 to 3.2%. 3%. 3 or 4%? You're right, that's really accurate. How did you know? I'm just guessing. <laughs> and forgetting milk for a second, once you remove fat, food begins to taste pretty badly. So what do we do? Threw a ton of sugar in it. What did that do? Spike our insulin, spike our blood sugar, make our waistlines get bigger. And here we are, right in the middle of an obesity epidemic. What do you take away from it? Oh, there's like different categories of foods. I don't know, I don't know what I'm supposed to be saying right now, though. Does it tell you how much of each food you should eat? No. It's confusing. <laughs> it seems like the further he gets up, the less he eats. I don't really get it. Get to the top, try to eat all of them. This is the steps he needs to take in his diet. Yeah, it was meant to be like introducing that we also need to balance our diet with exercise, but yeah, as far as a graphic is concerned, it's not very clear. I had to reach the top. Nope. Now the good part is my pyramid does aim to provide some insight into proportionality as represented by these colorful stripes on the pyramid. It stops there, leaving you to estimate how much more orange there is than yellow. It's really, really confusing. The chaos of the my pyramid wasn't a total waste though because there was a wide variety of foods here unlike the four basic food groups. There was upwards of 40 different foods on the graphic. In two okay, but also just a side note, notice how big dairy is on here. Yeah, that's the blue, right? Dairy is insanely large in this pyramid. We're like, that's about it. I think it might even be slightly bigger than your vegetables. And it's about on par with what they're saying you should have in grains. 
Like that is just insane to me when you're looking at a population that struggles with lactose intolerance and like particularly in children is a top food allergy. Like it just doesn't make sense to me, but here we are. 2011, the government tossed all the confusing guidance from the pyramid into the trash and introduced us the new redesigned my plate. It was gonna change how we talked and communicated about nutrition. Unfortunately, they may have overcorrected. While the misguided proportions of the pyramids were now gone, they also pulled a complete 180 in regards to fitness. Where'd the stairs go? We've also introduced a new word into our graphic, protein. And while recognizing that protein comes in forms that extend beyond animal products is no doubt an important evolution in messaging, there is but one fatal flaw. Protein is a macronutrient, not a food group. Yeah, so it's in everything which makes this extremely confusing if you're then going to overanalyze okay well i'm getting protein from my milk i'm getting protein from these nuts that i'm eating and i'm getting protein from this whole grain bread like how are you then calculating how much protein you're getting how much protein is proportional on your plate to make it look like this plate diagram you can just really get taken away with that because again protein is a macronutrient it's not a food group so if you want to say like meat and poultry yeah that would make sense and is obviously containing a lot of protein in it but you're also getting fats so it yeah it's just a lot more nuanced than saying protein and sticking with that this means that you can get your protein portion with hamburgers and hot dogs. Yeah, tasty, but not an ideal healthy source of protein. There is something I love about my plate, fish. For the first time, we actually see guidance recommending the consumption of seafood. And it's such a healthy food. It contains omega-3 fatty acids. We've actually seen evidence of reductions in heart disease and stroke risk. My biggest issue with my plate is that it says 100% fruit juice is the equivalent of a fruit serving. Yeah, maybe the Right, yeah, I, yeah, I take issue with that too, because again, the juice, it's like the refined grains I was talking about before, you're taking out all of the fiber and a lot of the nutritious parts of the fruit, and I think it might even say it about the vegetables, but when you're consuming it in a juice form, that's going to spike your blood sugar, and it's turning it into a simple carbohydrate when before... It's complex and that is a lot more nuanced and more how your body can absorb as many vitamins and minerals as possible. So yeah, I would recommend drinking juice instead of eating the fruit or vegetable. Vitamins and minerals are in there. But do you know how much sugar is in here? A can of cola, a popular energy drink, some sugar cubes, fruit juice. Which one of these four has the most sugar? I would say the energy drink, maybe? Probably the can of soda. Energy drink. Why do you say that? Because I drink energy drink every day to do my job. <laughs> and it gives you that sugar kick? Yeah. Energy drink? The soda. What if I was to tell you those two have the lowest amount of sugar? Oh. Probably the pure sugar cubes. No? No. No. The fruit juice? You're right. I am. And I actually sometimes drink it thinking that it's more nutrition. Yes, fruits contain sugar, but they also contain fiber, which slows the absorption of the sugar, thereby not spiking your blood sugar, not spiking your insulin. Drinking 100% fruit juice might get you the vitamins and minerals, but it's also gonna spike your sugar just like any other unhealthy sugary beverage. Folks, just eat eat the fruit. In strong contrast to the pasta extravaganza from 1992, we finally see vegetables dominating the plate. While this is excellent to see, the further guidance doesn't differentiate between leafy, dark green vegetables and potatoes. As much as it breaks my heart to say so, potatoes and french fries do not count as your daily vegetable. And that brings us to what modern nutritional guidance is today. What should you be eating? What should I be eating? For that, we turn to our friends at Harvard. Back to the kitchen. Here's a plate of food recommended by Harvard's modern nutritional guidance. We're entirely removing dairy and swapping it out for a healthy fat like olive oil. But it's nice that we're finally making the statement that not all fats 
equal bad because there are healthy fats and they play important roles within your body, creating hormones, protecting your organs, giving you energy, and even boosting your HDL, which is your good cholesterol. For the record, there's nothing wrong with having dairy. Remember, we're not villainizing ingredients. It's about not having excess dairy and not having low quality dairy. Another great addition to their recommendations is good old fashioned water. It's important to stay hydrated, not only for you to feel healthy, but also to encourage your metabolic rate. Those who are dehydrated actually have trouble losing weight and have lower levels of energy. Also, as you notice, the majority of the plate is plant-based, fruits and vegetables. But it's really important to get a wide variety of vegetables in different shapes, colors, and even sizes. Yeah, so if, I mean, there wasn't much to react to, I feel like, as far as the Harvard guidelines are concerned. I do wish that our government would, like, notice what they have said and make some of those changes into the official guidelines. Yeah, get it together. <laughs> but um, at least he has pointed out that that exists. So y'all can go check it out if you're wanting to see something a little bit better and more nuanced than what our U.S. official guidelines are. I really enjoyed reacting to this video. I hope you learned something. If you did, please let me know in the comments. As always, if you found value in this video, please smash that like button to help that YouTube algorithm, and I'll see you guys next time.